Hello everyone, welcome to PCT Lecture 3. Uh, today we talk about the transmission line model with a focus on inductance L. This picture shows us a transmission line network. We uh, transfer the power generated by a power generation here in the power station and boost up using a power transformer and then follow the three-phase transmission line to uh, some substation and then finally to the distribution at commercial or industrial buildings or uh, residential consumers. Um, we will talk about how to calculate the inductance of a transmission line in either a single phase or in three phase so that we understand how to design a network. The overhead transmission line is generally look like this. Um, the inductors has three phase in general and uh, we need to look at is uh, series resistance and series inductance and uh, most of the case we need on to also consider the capacitance of a line in respect to ground. So first of all the resistance of a conductor is given by R equal rho times L over A where um, rho is the resistivity of the conductor L is the length of the conductor and A is the cross section area. The conductor resistance uh, is affected by the frequency uh, of the um, AC current, the temperature of the cable and how we spiral it. So spiraling is a method that uh, we use to reduce the AC inductance. Um, so basically we don't use a single conductor but we use many small cables like this and there's a, a good reason behind it it is to uh, reduce the um, skin effect and also to increase the flexibility and dura durability of the line Next, uh, we need to calculate the inductance of a line and it is basically um, about how we calculate the flux in the transmission line and the voltage induced by that flux. Uh, by the definition, the inductance of a line is the ratio between the total magnetic flux linkage um, lambda over the current I. So um, basically we need to use this formula to calculate it but uh, in this uh, uh, online lecture we will not go too deep into the uh, calculation but we go directly to the formula how to formulate the uh, inductance of a line. So first we discuss about how to calculate the inductance of a single phase line which uh, consists of a um, line that carry the current going forward and another line that needs to carry the current going backward and form a loop. So um, basically we need to calculate the flux uh, linkage that's generated by this current and this uh, current and then add them together so um, the current in conductor A will have uh, a flux linkage that caused by a inductance LA which is given by this uh, formula uh, LA equal 2 times 10 to the power of minus 7 logarithm of D over R prime 1 R prime 1 here is uh, R1 which is the radius of conductor A multiplied with uh, exponential of minus 1 over 4 like this. Um, this one coming from the fact that we need to calculate the internal flux of uh, conductor A and uh, the internal flux will cause the equivalent radius of the uh, conductor A look 
smaller than it uh, seemed to be and the ratio is 0 0.7788 similarly uh, the conductance uh, B will uh, give us a inductance LB equal to 2 times 10 to the power of minus 7 logarithm of D over R prime 2 and R prime 2 is the new equivalent radius of the conductor B so the total inductance of a single phase line is given by L equal L A plus L B in case uh, that R1 equal R2 and equal R we uh, can summarize it as L equal 4 times uh, 10 to the power of minus 7 logarithm D over R prime and this is Henry over meter the R prime here is called cell geometric mean distance or GMR and usually it is designated by DS S stands for self so um, coming up with the three phase um, we analyze the most simple case which uh, has the uh, symmetrical spacing so we have a three conductors A, B, C which, is, which are uh, put uh, symmetrically in the form of an equilateral triangle with distance D here so the, the uh, inductance of phase A or a single phase is given by L equal 2 times 10 to the power of minus 7 logarithm of D over R prime and R prime here is the equivalent uh, radius of a conductor it is quite similar to the single phase case um, and uh, if we want to uh, uh, simplify the uh, formula better we can uh, write as L equals 0 0.2 logarithm D over R prime and this uh, one will give us the unit of millihenry over kilometer in general we don't have that kind of uh, symmetrical layout um, in reality we have the layout with uh, quite random distance like this and in this case the uh, phase uh, inductance will look different so the phase A we have a different inductance compared to phase B and phase C so a um, unsymmetrical layout will cause uh, unsymmetrical uh, inductance in the three phase and then we have difficulty in balancing the three phase system uh, in reality the balance of a three phase system can be restored by a changing the position of the conductor so we can rotate A and replace uh, A with B, B with C and C with A uh, it happens like this so this is the three phase line and after a distance we swap phase A with phase B, B with C and C with A like this and after another distance after another uh, equal interval we swap it again and after this um, the line will become like uh, B, C, A like this so if we look at the whole transmission line we see that phase A will travel the same distance in three positions the same apply for phase B and the same apply for phase C so in average the three phase look the same and they will bear the same resistance the same inductance and the same capacitance and this technique is called transposition so in this case we can calculate the average inductance per phase by averaging the individual uh, inductance of uh, each phase and in the end we will have the formula look quite similar with the GMD is the geometrical mean distance to give us the average distance between each phase so it is given by multiplying the 
this time between phase A and B, B and C, and C and A together, and then we take the root. Also here we see again the geometric uh, mean radius or GMR, RDS here. In case that we have uh, the same radius in phase A and B and C, we have the S equal R prime, which is R times exponential of minus 1 over 4, which is 0 0.7788. In general, we need to calculate the inductance of strain conductors. So, for example, we have uh, conductor P, which has uh, N strains, and conductor Q, which has M strain. The average inductance of a strain in the conductor P here is given by adding everything together like this and in the end we have the same formula. In this case we have the new GMD given by this one. So basically we need to look at one strain here and then calculate the distance between here and 1 prime, 2 prime, 3 prime all the way to M. Next, we look at the distance between the strain number 2 here, compared with 1 prime, 2 prime, and all the way to M. We continue all the way to end, and then we take the root together. The GMR, on the other hand, is a bit uh, more tricky because we need to look at the strain itself here in comparison with everything surrounding it. So the first one is the uh, distance between 1 and 1 itself and in this case we have D11 which is the um, GMR of itself which is the radius of itself multiplied with 0 0.7788 and after that, we need to look at the distance between 1 and 2, D12, and then D13, D14, D15, all the way to D, uh, D1N. And then we need to look at strain number 2, which is quite similar, and all the way to strain number N, and then we take the average, which is the root of it and then we have the GMR of the P conductor. So in the case of uh, extra high voltage transmission line, um, the lines are usually constructed with uh, bundle conductors. The bundle conductor is basically strain but uh, uh, the distance look really big compared to the uh, radius of the line. The advantage of this technique is to reduce the line inductance of the transmission line and then it will increase the power uh, transfer capability of the line. And also when we increase the distance or the, the, the effective uh, cross-section of the line, we reduce the surface voltage gradient we in turn reduce the corona loss and radio interference etc. In reality the conductors are bundled together as two or three or four with a symmetrical arrangement. The formula of the GMR is still the same but um, uh, because in uh, reality we have uh, uh, quite a few cases here so the shortcut for this formula is this one. So for double conductors uh, bundle we have uh, the equivalent uh, ds bundle equal the square root of ds times d. d is the distance here and ds is the uh, GMR of the line itself here. For 3 then it is uh, uh, square of ds times d square and for the case of 4, it is a bit strange, it's, uh, the, the, the new uh, 1 becomes uh, 1.09 and square of uh, d times uh, this uh, 
cup uh, cubic. In general, for a three phase system of high voltage, we do not transfer power using only a uh, three lines, but we use six lines like this. And if we look at it uh, with a bundle uh, point of view, then we have a bundle of A and A prime, B and B prime, C and C prime, which will help us to reduce the inductance. And we can see that this layout has a uh, unsymmetrical uh, geometric. So we need to, uh, to to understand that in reality they will have to swap position or uh, transpose within its groups. And after a long distance, everything will be balanced out. To calculate the inductance, we need to look at the formula again. So this is the formula of the double circuit lines. Um, the average phase inductance is still the same. It is equal to times 10 to the power of minus 7 uh, logarithm of GMD over GMRL in this case. So we need to define the GMD and GMR here. It is quite simple. In this case, uh, because it's three phase, then we need to average out the distance between the phase itself. So the AB, the BC, and the AC, the A in capital stand for a phase, which consists of uh, the small A and small A prime here. And the same for B and C. So if we look closely at the AB, it is actually about the distance between four points A, B, A prime, B prime. So the average distance between the phase A and phase B is the distance between AB, uh, AB prime, A prime B, and A prime B prime. And then we average them out. The same apply for the BC and the AC. And then when we look at the GMRL here, we need to look into phase A, phase B, and phase C, and then average them out. So for phase A, we are looking at the bundle A, small a here, and small a prime here. So we assume that in this case, they all have the same uh, GMR, which is uh, denoted by DB here, S here. And this DB, they are the same, so we need to square them up. And we're talking about the distance between phase, uh, the, the distance between A and A prime, and the distance between A prime and A. So that's why we have D A A prime here and square up. And then we need to take the average out of everything. And then we will have the SA here. The same apply for the SB and the SC. And then we average them out. And then we will have GMRL. Then we replace them to this formula. And in the end, we can calculate the equivalent uh, average inductance of a single phase in this uh, double line circuit. So this is the end of lecture 3. Please remember to do your homework with is tutorial 3 and prepare for quiz 2 which covers uh, tutorial 2 and will last for 30 minutes. Remember, don't be late.